Good morning, saints. Good morning. Welcome to the presence of Daddy. Big Daddy has been waiting for us. You know he loves us to bits. He can't wait for his children to gather around him. We are happy to be here. It's a beautiful Sunday. I don't care how the weather looks outside. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. It's a choice. We've, we've made up our minds to rejoice because in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So we can only rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Once you you understand my daddy owns the world <laughs> and therefore the world is mine. My daddy owns it all. Therefore it all belongs to me. All things are mine in Christ Jesus. Why wouldn't I rejoice? All right, saints. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's a, it's even double, <laughs> double, double blessing, double beautiful. What can a Christian ask for? It's Pentecost Day. We are remembering that day 2000 years ago when people were still eating and drinking and partying and marrying and, and giving to marry to marriage and then the holy spirit hit just like on in the days of uh, of uh, noah and that's why jesus is warning us don't just you know be oblivious watch for the times you don't know the day you don't know the season but be ready always be ready so today we want to you know use this opportunity this date of today this calendar season the jewish people are celebrating the same pentecost you know, Christians are celebrating the same Pentecost. But you see, God did it. He's not, he's not man-made. If it's man-made, this one will celebrate in January, another one will celebrate in October. But as you can see, everything works out together for good for those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. So let us, um, let us uh, look at... Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, so we can use it and pray. Acts of Apostles 2. Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. I will read the first four verses. Acts of Apostles 2, verses 1 to 4. And it says... When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled. <laughs> they were all filled. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. They were all filled. None was left out. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance according to what the Spirit gave to them. They spoke. The issue here is hunger. The issue here is desperation. You hear others do it. You see others do it. What is your attitude? Oh, that's for them. Oh, I don't understand. 
No, 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 it's hunger. They were filled because they were hungry. Jesus had left 10 days before, and he said, remain in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from above. They, did, they had no clue what that power was going to look like. They had, um, we all know, every time, the whole time Jesus was there with them, they had no clue what he was talking about. So this time they just remained in obedience. About 500 people, you know, interacted with Jesus after the resurrection according to what is written. But how many people remained out of obedience? 120. It could be curiosity, it could be obedience. It could, you want to know what was he talking about? Why did he ask us to remain? Aha, uh -huh. and so they did in obedience because you know they didn't know he was God until they saw him die and 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 and, and uh, came back to life three days later, and then they said, ah. But still, it didn't really get into them. But this time they said, we are, we are not going to be stupid. We won't miss it again. He's been telling us things for three years. We didn't know. This time, we will wait. So 120 made up their minds. That's all. 120. What we are talking about is not fairy tale. What we are talking about here is not baby bedtime story. This is the power of God in action. This is God Almighty. This is humanity having to do with divinity. So how much brain have you got to, to understand divinity? To know everything about the divine. That's why it's a mystery. And because people don't want to, to spend time and wait and look into it, they just brush it aside. And so God says, well, my children perish due to lack of knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm calling them to come and receive wisdom, but they won't just spend time with me. So anybody today that has not received this baptism of fire, it's your opportunity. The word of God is the word of God. It's not Victoria's word. It's what you want that God will give to you. He sees your heart. If you say, Jesus, I want you. What you did for your disciples 2,000 years ago, do it for me today. Holy Spirit, the same way you filled those who waited on you. Feel me today. I am hungry. I am empty. Without you, I have nothing. So I need you to feel me. Don't feel me with what every other person has. Feel me with that special thing that you know is mine. Because he says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So everybody wasn't you know, robotic, doing the same thing. No. That it was, it's to show you that this is God. They could see physical flames of fire. It says, as, you know, uh, tongues, divided tongues as of fire. They could see. There were 120. They could see it on each other. And then when they opened their mouth, different languages came out. This was God saying, people, you've, 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 just, you've been hungry for too long. You've been without power for too long. Let me remind you that I have a language. I want to give you my language, something out of this world that you can always communicate with me that nobody else would understand. That is just you and I in communication, in fellowship, in oneness, in holiness. That's why you need that fire to purify you, to sanctify you, to set you apart. It's not for babies. We are not, we are not doing bedtime story here. If you want the power of God, all you need 
is your heart. Put your heart in the right place. Start to repent for ignorance. Start to repent for for being too religious <laughs> because the Holy Spirit is not religious at all. <laughs> I don't know what you people call religion. This, this, we are not doing religion here. The Holy Spirit is God and he does outrageous, unimaginable things. Things that your mind cannot fathom. And that's why people who are just earthly minded, they, they cannot understand. On the day of Pentecost, they say, oh, these are drunk. Drunk with what? I'm drunk with the fire of God. It's something you can't fathom. So let us take our hearts to the Lord Jesus this morning and say, Lord, you are not partial. What you did for them, you do it for me. And if we quickly, quickly go with me to Acts chapter 10. I just remember dear Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. That means not a Jew. There was a certain man, Acts 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God. That means he reverenced God. He had that reverence for God. He honored God. He wasn't a Jew, he was, but he was living there in Israel. He was an Italian military man. <laughs> But he knew not to be, not to fight God. <laughs> he was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. He had his heart in the right place and he caused his family to be conformed to that spirit of humility. And he said, and he gave alms generously. So he was kind-hearted. He was generous. And uh, he, he gave alms to the people and prayed to God always. So it's not when I'm, I feel good, when I don't feel good. Always means always because his heart was in the right place. And he prayed so much that one day, verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly, clearly in a vision, an angel of God. God will visit you. Don't tell me you were born a pagan. You were born this or that. It's your heart. I don't care where you were born, how you were born. It's your heart. He clearly, he saw clearly in a vision, an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He will call you by name so that you know that he knows your name. You are not a mistake. <laughs> oh, people, don't let me start. I just want to pray now. You, who, t who tells you, oh, I wanted a boy. Now I got a girl. Oh, I wanted a girl. Now I got a boy. We didn't plan for you. You just came by. So what nonsense? Oh, I'm a, 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 a somebody mad person raped my mom and I came and I'm, no, God was there because you were born. It's not every rep that a child is born out of. Because you were born, God has a purpose for, so that he can use you and straighten up others. If, if you came in a wrong way, God has a purpose for everybody. It's not every rep that, that, that you know, brings a child. So if you were born in rep, God has a purpose. So don't listen to Satan. Ask God, okay, why did you bring me into the world under these circumstances? Show me my purpose. Show me the story you want me to tell. Leave that thing. He saw an angel because his heart was in the right place. And the angel said, oh, he says, um, your, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa. He says, send men to Joppa. See, this guy was a high-ranking man. He, the angel knew that he had servants. He had people he could send out. 
You, are you still poor? Oh, I have everything I want. I don't need God. Carry on. and Go and pay for the air that you are breathing first. Then I know that you don't need God. He says, send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And this was the beginning of Christianity. So Peter himself, being a proper, proper Jew, never had anything to do with Gentiles, was there fasting and praying, you know, time to eat. And while they were making food for him, God showed him in a vision all these so-called unclean animals. God said, Peter, get up, kill and eat. He said, not so, Lord. Don't you know I'm kosher? Don't you know I'm Jewish? I don't eat such things. Jesus says, what I call holy, what I call clean, you cannot call unclean. See, God was preparing his mind for Cornelius. And while that happened, that's what I'm saying is your heart. Peter, yes, he did not understand this new era, but his heart was right with Jesus. So while this happened, people knocked at the gate. And the Holy Spirit is like, go down, those people are looking for you. And so he went, and that was his first encounter with Gentiles that they wouldn't go near. And then he followed them to Caesarea, where Cornelius was. And while, because, the, you know, he had to bring the gospel to the Gentile, people who didn't know God. Now the door, Jesus is dead, raised from the dead, gone to heaven. You know, the Holy Spirit has come, but they still didn't understand that it was for all, not for just the Jews. So Jesus is opening the door. Say, now go, go to the Gentile. The people I told you, stay clear of. Now I want you to mingle with them. And then he went. And verse 44 says, while Peter was still speaking these words, trying to explain to these, you know, people who have not been in the covenant, it's like we've been enjoying this covenant for years. Now let the Lord Jesus has opened the door and you guys can come in. So while he was doing that, the Holy Spirit is like, Peter, I know you like to talk, but wham! There, verse 44. While Peter was still speaking this word, the Holy Spirit fell upon all, again, all those who heard the word. How did they hear the word? in their heart because they have been praying they have been hungry they were blind and when their heart was seeking truth and god sent help that's all i'm talking about if your heart is looking for truth i don't care whether you are in the pit like the prodigal son that light bulb will come on and god will meet you where you are so stop giving excuses. All you are saying is excuse. What I'm offering you today is a gift that you cannot pay for. All you need is to open your heart and receive. And it just depends on how much you want it. It just depends on how much you want it. And God will give you according to what he created you to be. That's why in chapter 2 of that Acts of Apostles that we were just reading, it says that the Holy Spirit, verse 4, and they were all filled, just like the, the Gentiles were filled in, in chapter 10, in Cornelius' family, that you are called in today. If you have never spoken in tongues, if you never receive, in receiving the, the, fire, uh, the baptism of fire is not just speaking in tongues. Yes, that's one of the evidence. But the thing is that this holy fire will purify you. You wake up tomorrow morning, you look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, I don't know this person. Yeah, that's what it means. 
born again, <laughs> transformed from inside out. Outside, those who saw you yesterday may still think you are the same, but you will know that you are no longer the same because something has changed. So I want us to pray for those who are hungry, for those who are empty and need to be filled. I want you to open your mouth and just speak like a baby if you have not spoken in tongue before. Because you have to move your mouth. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is already in you once you are hungry. And it will come up like water. It, it says like, a, like a, as of a rushing mighty wind. It will come up. Even if you are saying ta 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 ta, it's a new language. It will grow. Don't let that intimidate you that others can speak, you know, and you, you just say tata. When a baby starts to talk, what does, what does the baby say? Tata, mama, papa. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. Some people, you know, it says according to him, gave them all trans, according to what he wants. So some people just, you know, flow, and some people just take baby steps. You can't compare yourself to anybody. Just don't feel intimidated. It's a free gift from your father. So let us pray right now and give those people the opportunity to speak in tongues. First of all, say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my heart. I need you, if you are hungry, to be filled with power from above. This is God filling humans. <laughs> I don't know if I have to ask you twice for you to jump to the, to the opportunity. This is God wanting to come into, into a human being. Of course, you'll do wild things, things that you never thought possible. But first, you must acknowledge him. First, you must know that Jesus paid the price for, for you to have that open uh, uh, um, portal to the father. Either you are a child or you are an outsider. If you accept that you want to be a child, Jesus brought you into the family, adopted you into the family. So God doesn't see you anymore. He sees the blood of his son on you, in you, around you. So you are no more filthy. You are no more guilty. You are no more uh, uh, whatever shameful or anything you are now the image of christ that's why god had to come into the world as you in the form of human the word of god became flesh so that he can help flesh so let flesh now step aside and receive the divine that's the precious so, Father, we come to you this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. And we know we are babies. We don't even know what we are doing. We don't know what we are expecting. But we approach your throne of grace boldly to accept, to receive mercy. We know you are a merciful God. You are a gracious God. You are a good father. You are a loving father. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to earth to represent the father in heaven. You came to show us the way back to the father. You made yourself like one of us. You, represent, you represented us here when you were here and now you are representing us there in heaven while you are there. Thank you for what you did for us, Lord Jesus. We welcome you into our hearts. We welcome you into our lives. We honor you, we reverence you, and we thank you for what you did. And you didn't just do it and leave and say, okay, you guys carry on, I've shown you how it happens. You said, no. I won't leave you as orphans. When I go back to the Father, I'll send another one just like me. And he will guide you into all the truth. 
sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you that you came. The promise of the Father and the promise of the Son. Thank you that you came and you stayed to continue to reveal to us everything that Jesus spoke about, everything Jesus taught. Thank you that you are here every day, every time, 24-7. You never leave, you never forsake us. Because that's your promise. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. We ask you, sweet Holy Spirit, right now, by your love, by your power, in the name of Jesus, that you would feel us afresh and that you would feel those who are hungry, who are empty, whom the world has stolen from. Jesus said the enemy comes only to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Holy Spirit, we want that abundant life in Christ Jesus right now. We need you to fill us, to overflow in us, to, to empower us, to, to enlighten us, to just teach us, to show us. Be the Spirit of Jesus in us. You are God Almighty, and we worship you. Holy Spirit, I just ask that for those who have never spoken in tongues, because you are the comforter, that you would give them that comfort, that what they are experiencing is not strange, that it's just beautiful. Whether they are crying, whether they are laughing, whether they are rolling on the floor, however you touch them, because every individual has a different way of expression. I just pray that you comfort them. And I release your fire over all of us right now. Whosoever will may come, Marco Sarata, Escalama Santo, Aziba, 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 Arigaroda. Zakata, 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 Asamare. Kandiaribo, Marco Osarata. Eskalama Santo. Zibaba, Rigaroda, Azakata. Kandiaribo, Kandiaribo, Kandiaribo. Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Mamabo, Azakata. Zakata Asamare, Sanctificum Experimentum Mamabo Zakata, Chelela Kaya, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Kanderibo Marco Sarata. Let it rise, let it rise, open your tongues, don't hold it back, let it rise, Mamabo Azakata, Azegede, Azegede, Azakata. The Holy Spirit will give you utterance according to his gifts, his plans for you. Aziba, 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 Roda, Azakata. Kandiaribo, 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 Marco, Asarata. Chelelakai, Chelelakai, Chelelakai. Azibaba, Azibaba, Azibaba. He is the spirit of excellence. He can never do you wrong. <laughs> he is perfect in all his ways. Mama Bo Zakata. Ariga Roda Zakata. Open your heart. It's a love affair. It's a deep, deep love affair. Deep calls unto deep. Nobody can love you like Jesus. He created you for himself. And he made you just perfect the way he wanted you. Marco Asarata. Yes, Lord. Aziba, Ziba, Ziba, Ziba. Rigoro Dazakata. Kandiaribo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we are so perfect. Nothing can change about us. You have fearfully and wonderfully made us. Just the way you wanted. Just the way you like us. 
Thank you that you are always smiling at us. Thank you that your love stretches beyond what our minds can imagine. Like you stretch your arms on the cross. And it goes on and on and on and on. Your love never ends. Thank you for paying the price, Lord Jesus. Thank you for sending us your spirit. Because you couldn't enter into us as a full-grown human being. You could only be in us by your spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Spirit of the living Jesus, we worship you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for caring so much. Thank you for loving so much. Thank you for making us who you want us to be. Thank you that we are not duplicates. Even twins are, are not duplicates. They, they just look alike, but they are, they are different. Thank you that you didn't make any duplicates. We are special and we are perfect just the way you wanted us to be. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. All adoration. Marco Sarata. Escalama Santo. Azibaba Rigaro da Zakata Kanderibo Mama Bo Azakata Paro de Ge Espera de Deasa Sandara Masha. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We've already spent half an hour. Let the Holy Spirit do what only he can do today. I kept you longer the last two Sundays. I'm planning not to keep you too long today. Let's read the same Acts of Apostles, chapter 4 this time. Chapter 4, from verse 13 to 22. Acts of Apostles 4. Verse 18 to 22. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. <laughs> and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Ah, that's why. And seeing the, the men, sorry, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. <laughs> But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, <laughs> Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Verse 20. For we cannot bespeak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, 
they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. May the Lord bless his word and may the Lord put us in the right place. May he enlighten the ears of our heart. May he open the eyes of our heart. May we see right. May we hear right. May we know right and may we speak right from our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so today's title, as you can see, is The Spirit of Excellence, Part 2. We started Part 1 last week. You started early. You have to bear with me. <laughs> we call the Holy Spirit of fire. He's here. Everything that was frozen is melting. <laughs> All right. So, we are talking about the spirit of excellence. The spirit of God is an excellent spirit. Nothing you can do against it. Either you, you choose to, to find out or you can remain ignorant. God doesn't force anybody. And that is what is evident in the part we just read here. Verse 18 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, that's the council of the elders, the, the learned, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, those of the high class, highly educated, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived, they knew it, that they were uneducated. The Holy Spirit doesn't need your PhD. He just needs you to surrender. They perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They were not trained. They were fishermen, no education, and yet they saw their boldness. They marveled. <laughs> when God finishes with you, people who knew you before will marvel. That's why this is not a, a fairy tale. Either you let it happen to you or you leave it. It's, it's your choice. It's what you want. There's, there's enough food on the table. It's a buffet. Eat what you what you like. If you don't like to eat, leave it. Let those who are hungry eat it. They marveled. These, these, these are uneducated fishermen. How could they speak so boldly, so el so eloquently, so so with authority? And the next verse explains it. And they realized, ah, they realized that they had been with Jesus. You can only speak like that when you are a carbon copy of Jesus. <laughs> only when Jesus has rubbed his heavenly thing on you. That's the only way an uneducated person can stand up before educated people and speak so clearly, so boldly, so intelligently, so wisely, because it is the wisdom of God. God put the words in Peter's mouth, and he spoke it. And these people were saying, huh, where did it, how did that happen? These people can't speak like that. Uh-huh, it's not you speaking. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through your mouth because you've offered your, your vessel. It's not your education. When God asks you, can I use your body? Can I, are you my temple? Can I dwell there? Can I do a God thing through you? And you say yes. So he'll do it. 
And that's why people marvel. But you have to remember, no, I came from the end of the woods. It's not me, guys. It's not me. Don't, 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 don't put me in trouble. I can't touch God's glory. It, the glory of God you're seeing is not Victoria. They realized that they had been with Jesus. That's the only way you receive that kind of power, authority, boldness, wisdom, and the rest. And seeing the, the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Remember last week we were talking about the, the satraps conspiring to, to catch Daniel out, but they could find nothing. So when people start to revile you because of Jesus, start to dance, because they have looked everywhere else, they couldn't find anything to fault you, and then they'll come, oh, you're always talking about Jesus. Oh, you're a Jesus girl. Oh, you're a Jesus boy. I can't, we can't do anything with you anymore. Aha, uh -huh, that's when you start to dance. Oh, Jesus, thank you that they can see you in me. They look for fault. They couldn't find any fault. Thank you that they can see you in me. And then you smile back at them and like, you know what? You can have what you see. <laughs> you can have it. It's a gift. It's for all. And that's how you can evangelize, tell people about Jesus. What you see and like is not mama and papa. What you see and like, or hate for that matter, is out of this world. That's why you can't understand it. But you can have it if you want it. So, for that reason, we must never, never, ever be intimidated when you have the excellent spirit of God working things out through you and in you and around you. Don't be intimidated. Let people say what they like. It's because they couldn't find fault. That's why they are starting to attack you with things that are unreasonable. Even you, you'll be like, come on. <laughs> Uh, what are you guys talking about? That's totally unreasonable. Ah, when you stop for a moment, you say, mm-hmm, now I know. They are seeing something that is out of this world, and they don't understand it. They can't put a language to it. That's why they are getting agitated. Never be intimidated when things like that happen. Never let them pull you down. It's because you are so far above their reach. They are looking for things to say, to do. Don't be bothered. As long as you know that your heart is in the right place with Jesus, Jesus will sort himself out. Is it not him they are seeing? You want to fight for Jesus? Jesus will sort himself out. Don't worry about that one. Just remember, I have the excellent spirit of God in me. So I cannot do differently. I am who I am because God has endued me with power that even I don't understand. God has poured a gift into me. He has filled me with something even I do not understand. He is not human. So your brain can't even go that far. It's not in the brain. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of excellence. And he does things that in this fallen and broken world, you are out of place. Trust me, you are out of place. Because you can't fit in. The world is fallen and broken. Everything is shattered and confused. And then you come perfect. The spirit of excellence. Because they can't catch you, they'll start to complain. Don't let that bother you. Learn it now. Learn it now. When people complain unnecessarily about you, just 
start to smile. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you that people can start to see you in me. You are so different. That's why the Pharisees could never understand you. Oh, thank you that this is happening to me. Remember, stay with the Holy Spirit. He teaches us all things. If you want to grow, stick with the Holy Spirit. Just keep telling him, Lord, never ever let me go. Tie me to yourself. Even though I throw tantrums, even though I feel like I have no friends anymore, Lord, tie me to yourself. Wherever you are, that's where I want to be. Never make a step without me, Lord. Take me by the hand like a mother holds a child and take me anywhere you want to go. I'm just following you. I don't know what you want to do. Just do what you want to do. Let others marvel. Even I marvel. But just do what you want. Let's read John chapter 14, verse 20. Gospel of John first. Then we go to 1 John. I want to show you this. The Gospel of John chapter 14. Gospel of John 14, verse 26. So this is Jesus talking. Can I start with 25, please? Let me just start with 25. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 25. Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. It's like I'm telling you now. That's why he kept saying, He who has ears, let him hear. Everybody had physical ears. That's not what he was talking about. He was saying, Is your heart sharp? Is, are you present with your heart? I'm telling you these things while I am still here with you physically. And he says in verse 26, but <laughs> I know when I go, you start to wonder, where is he? Where is our Lord? Where is my king? Where is my master? He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. You don't have to struggle to learn it on your own. You don't have to struggle to do it by yourself. Jesus says, I am here and I'm telling you ahead of time. But I know that you will forget. I know that life will happen. He says, but the helper. The one that will come to help you out of those problems. The one that will come to help you out of those situations that you don't know what to do about. The one that is ever ready to help. God Almighty wants to help you. He even calls himself helper. He's not your butler. He's not your day maid. In his infinite love, he knows that you are helpless. That's why Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. I know that you are not even getting what I'm saying. But I'll come back in a different form. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So the Father sent his word to become flesh, and now he sent his spirit into the world to help those who need help. Those who are empty, he will fill. 
Those who are hungry, he will feed. Those who are thirsty, he will give to drink. Those who are sick, he will heal. Those who are confused, he will bring peace and wisdom and, and he will cause you to conform to the, to the image of Christ. Because we live in a rotten world. Jesus Christ is the only piece of island where there is peace because he is the prince of peace. That's why many people cannot understand you, that things are happening around you and you're still peaceful. They'll start to accuse you. Can't you see that the people are dying around you? Yeah, but you can step into my side where nobody's dying. Goshen was in Egypt. Disaster was in Egypt, but not in Goshen. Why don't you step into Goshen? Why are you standing in Egypt and complaining? Why am I enjoying and you are angry? You can come in and enjoy as well. You don't have to be there where people are dying. You can come to where there's life. You can come to where there's peace. Don't get angry because I'm peaceful. You can have the same peace. Because the helper is here. Nobody sent you to do anything by yourself. He is God Almighty choosing to help you. You don't even know him. And here you are only feeling unworthy. Did he not know you were unworthy when he died for you in the first place to pay the price for that unworthiness? Did he not know that you were helpless when he called himself the helper? Did he not know that you have nothing to offer when he calls himself the spirit of wisdom? How could uneducated and unlearned men speak so boldly and so eloquently that educated ones marvel? You think it only happened 2,000 years ago? Look again. It's yours if you want it. Because the help I see, the one that gives new language is here. In the language you are speaking, people can't understand it. Change it. Say, Holy Spirit, give me a new language that people will understand. The helper is here. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of excellence. The spirit that will make you stand out in a crowd. And you want to blend in? Go on and blend in. Be politically correct. But don't come and cry when they crush your head. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So when you call Jesus, you are calling the Holy Spirit. It's the same person. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one person. He will teach you all things. Did he say some? He said all. And he will bring to your remembrance because I know your brain is small. You can't put it all in, uh, all in at once. But when you need me, I'll be right there. I'll remind you of something that you read two months ago. And I said, remember what you read? That situation is here now. Apply. What brain have you got to carry the whole Bible all the time? No, it's a spirit that brings his word up and causes you to remember those, those things you read. That's why people read the Bible and say, I don't understand, I don't understand, because you are trying to do it in the flesh. You can't understand only the Holy Spirit gives understanding. God is not stupid to come and die and suffer 
all that he did and to just drop something so excellent, so perfect on the road for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to pick. No, you have to search for gold. You have to search for what is precious. If it's precious for you, spend time, search it out. Honor it, value it. It's a gift, yes, but if you don't value it, you think I gave you something, something beautiful. Next time I come to your house, I see that thing trashed on the floor. You think I will go and buy something nice and give you again? That's why the Holy Spirit waits. So that you don't become an orphan. He knows when you are ready. And we say, oh, Holy, God, come. God, come. God, come. And you are not ready. He comes. He gives you something precious. You don't know what to do with it. No, spend time with him first. It's not Hollywood. It's not show business. This is relationship, human with the divine. Human and divinity working together. You in me and I in you. That's why you, you can't but be different. If you're not different, then you don't have the spirit of excellence in you. He will teach you all things, not the ones you learn in school, and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And Jesus says in verse 27, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Don't look for me in the world. You can't find me in, in that dirt. Come to where there's light. Come to where there's perfection. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't worry about what they say. Just come. I'll give you peace, even in the storm. And then 1 John. 1 John, let's see. I think it's chapter 5. Yeah, sorry, it's chapter 5. Uh, oh, bear with me. No. 1 John 2. Okay, 1 John 2, verse 27. That's what I'm looking for. 1 John 2, uh, verse 27. It says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you peter and john didn't need to be taught they didn't, they didn't need to go to bible school they didn't need to go to pharisee school they didn't need to go to any school the anointing the holy spirit teaches you all things the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and it is not a lie i told you at the beginning this is not fairy tale this is not bedtime stories it is true and it's not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him that's why you are called out. That's why you are separated. That's why you cannot be like others. That's why Peter and John were completely out of place, that the educated marveled. We know that they are uneducated. How, when, how, when did they learn to speak like that? It's the Holy Spirit. He anoints you with power. He anoints you with wisdom. He anoints you with boldness. You just have to love him. You just have to surrender to him. You just have to agree with him. You can do nothing. Jesus says on your own, you can do nothing. Nothing means nothing. All things mean all things. <laughs> so let us on this day of Pentecost make up our minds. Do I want this gift or do I just want to do religion? Call myself a Christian and I don't have a clue who Christ is.
Excuse me. Um, checking the time now. Let's quickly look at Daniel chapter 5. Daniel 5 from verse 13. Daniel 5. Remember we were in Daniel last week. Daniel chapter 5 verse 13. I'll quickly read and we will get the message quickly. Because we don't have too much time. I don't want to overrun today. Verse 18, chapter 5. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel, which is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you. This is Old Testament. Long before the day of Pentecost, God has always dealt with people who gave him his, their time, who gave him their time. Daniel always prayed, like Cornelius. He wasn't a Jew, but he was always praying, and God visited him. God knows where you are. He just wants your heart to be in the right place. All right. Verse 14 again of Daniel 5. I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Why? Because of the Spirit of God. Verse 15, now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this handwriting and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. You can't. Not in the flesh, it's divine. Verse 16, and I've heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. See, Daniel hasn't even done it yet. The, the promotion is waiting <laughs> because of the spirit of excellence. The spirit of the living Jesus is the spirit of excellence. Verse 17, then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for you. I'm not interested in your gifts. And give your reward to another yet, yet. I will read the, hand, the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. Whomever he wished, he put down. But, but when his heart was lifted up, he forgot that his power was not his. It was given him. He forgot it and became proud. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. See, it was a gift. He misused it. At least for some time. Later he realized it. Verse 21. 
Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. Verse 23. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which not, uh, which uh, do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, ofazen. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius, the meat, received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. You see, it is given, it is received. You have nothing. Trust me, you have nothing. The easiest thing is for you to humble your heart. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't honor God, if you are proud and self-centered, you will end like Belshazzar. And God doesn't even want that for you. Because he had the example from his father Nebuchadnezzar. And he did not learn. Humility is the key. Humility. Humble yourself. Don't wait for God to humble you. Just go and humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I did not know these things. That's why Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning, beginning of wisdom. The moment you start to reverence God, the moment you start to honor God, that's when the helper comes. And he helps you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One. Once you start to seek to know him, that is understanding. He endows you with these gifts. Without humility, you are nothing but means me, dead meat like, like Belshazzar. You, you are worth nothing because you, you don't honor the one that holds the breath, the, the air that you are breathing. He holds your life in his hands. That's what it says there in, in, in verse, verse uh, 
He says, you, you, you took the gold from God's house and, and started doing party. No reverence, no honor, no respect. You, you worship gold and silver, sticks and stones. Things that don't see, things that don't hear, things that know nothing. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, everything you are, God owns them. He gave you as a gift. Your life is a gift from God. I'm sure I said that last Sunday as well. Your life, your whole being, you are a gift. God molded you and sent you into this earth realm and said, go and represent me. I give you my spirit. I give you my, my power. I give you my wisdom. And here we come to the earth realm and then we brush God aside and say, okay, thank you for sending me to the earth realm. Now let me struggle on my own. Let me find out, you know, which way to go. He, he holds your bread in his hands and owns all your ways. And that's why you must glorify him. And it calls for humility. And it is only when you start to seek the knowledge of the Holy One that these things will start to make sense to you. We have to learn. We have to move on. We have to, 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 to understand who this God is. We have to understand that he put us here for a reason, for his reason, for his purpose. Ask him, Lord, why did you send me to earth? When he created Adam and Eve and put in the garden, did they ask for it? Did you ask to be sent here? That's why I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter how you were born, through whom you were born, where you were born. Ask God, why was I born there? Why was I born through this family? Why did I come from that country, ask God. Anyway, let's come back to the New Testament. Acts chapter 4 again. Acts chapter 4. We are talking about the excellent spirit. Daniel had it in the Old Testament, and you have no excuse now. Acts chapter 4, verse 18, I will start to read. It says, so they called them, so this is the council of the elders, summoning Peter and John for, for, <laughs> for healing a man. <laughs> Instead of accepting like everybody oh something beautiful has happened no they want to oppose what is good because it doesn't appeal to their own ego so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of jesus but peter and john answered and said to them whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you be the judge. You, you are the elders. You are the educated ones. You are the teachers of Israel. So now tell me, is it, is it better? Is it right in God's sight to listen to you rather than listen to God? You tell me what is right to do. You see? People don't get challenged. Or people just tell you, oh, stop this Christianity thing. And you say, oh, oh yeah, I will stop it. That means you don't, you don't even know yourself. You don't deserve to be there. Somebody is being healed, a crippled man, 40 years old. And you are saying, because you don't understand what I'm doing, or because you are jealous of Jesus, I should stop preaching in the name of Jesus. To suit who or who? God is helping human beings. All you want is to destroy human beings. So it suits you that people should be poor. It suits you that people should be lame. It should suits you that people should be wretched. 
So when Christians come and do the supernatural, oh, stop that thing. Why? Because it's touching you. It's, it's, it's touching your lie, the lie in your heart. That's why when you see truth, you can't handle it. Why, why is the name of Jesus such a threat to you? Do I stop you from calling the name that you are calling? Why is the name of Jesus such a threat? Is it because you feel guilty? God doesn't want you to feel guilty. He wants you to come and receive the peace, the wisdom, the boldness. To get rid of your pride and humble yourself and ask for truth. And the helper will come and help you out of your mess. Stop opposing what you can clearly see that is good. If you want to live in the mess, live in the mess. I'm not stopping you. I'm only inviting you. You can come and have a better life. We are not doing religion. Keep your religion to yourself. I'm not interested. Judge for yourself. Is it right in God's sight that I should listen to you or listen to God? I think you're educated. Judge it for yourself. Who should I listen to, you or God? Should I do what you tell me or should I do what God tells me? Use your wisdom. You're educated. Let you be the judge. Peter says in verse 20, For we cannot but speak. We cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. It's not about what you think. Think and do what you like. But leave me to do what I like as well. Where is the problem? Where is the problem? I'm not stopping you. So why are you trying to stop me? Verse 21. So when they had for that threatened them, it's only a threat, people. If you are true Christians and a uh, Christian and people are just harassing you, it's a threat. You, it, that means you are a thorn in their flesh. They threaten you. So they further threaten them. They let them go, finding no way of punishing them. They, because they can't find fault. That's why they are coming with all that nonsense. Because you have an excellent spirit. You live a faultless life that, that they dream of, that they cannot have. And instead of coming to you humbly and saying, how can I be like that? They, they are envious because they are children of Satan. Satan is using them. They found no, no, no fault, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. They said it themselves in verse 16. What shall we do to these men? For indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them. Through, through, through them. Peter and John never said we did it. They said this man is healed because of the name of Jesus. It's been done through them, and it is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And even we, even though as much as we want to deny it, we cannot deny it. You see, they know the truth, but the evil in their heart doesn't, doesn't want them to stop. That's why I'm saying without humility, you are dead meat. Let's um, carry on. I want us to... Let's go to First John 
I think, yeah, First John chapter 5 this time. First John 5. I want to show you that the people that oppose you are not doing it by themselves. They don't even know what they are doing because they are living in darkness. That's why they allow Satan to use them. First John 5 verses 19, 19 and 20 says, We know that we are of God and the whole world, the whole world, we who are Christians, I'm not talking about religion, those who have chosen to do right according to Christ. They have made up their minds to follow Jesus, to, to dig into these mysteries, to find out, to know God, to be wise, to allow the spirit of wisdom to help them. That's what John said here. We know that we are of God. It is a fact who we are. And the whole world, the rest, the rest of the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. There are only two sides to the game. Don't tell me, oh, I'm neither this nor that. No, you are either one or the other. To make up your mind. If you are not for Christ, then you are under the influence of the enemy. You have no other choice. You are educated, read it for yourself. You don't even need to read it, you know it in your heart. It's a coin, it has two sides. It's a game, it has two sides. You, hide, you either play on this side, on this team, or you play on the other team against each other. So the kingdom of Satan is against the kingdom of God. So you have to decide which kingdom are you under. You are either influenced by the kingdom of God or you are influenced by the kingdom of Satan. Satan is not uh, a joker. He has his kingdom. Jesus says it himself. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. You choose which side you want to belong to. John says, <laughs> I know where I belong. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. This understanding is given when your heart is humble. That we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. Because you are in him, you take on his form. In his son, Christ Jesus. This is the true God and eternal life. When you are in this kingdom, in this person who gives you the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding, when you seek him, he will let you know all things. That's why John says, we know, we know it. I don't need anybody to teach me. I don't need to go to college to learn it. I know it because the spirit of wisdom lives in me. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the swear, the influence of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding, a certain level of understanding that the world, those under the influence of Satan can never know. We know. We have this, we have this understanding that we may know him who is true. 
to God enables you. God gives you the ability. The Holy Spirit teaches all things. He leads into all truth. Jesus said in chapter 4, of, you know, the Gospel of John, I'm telling you these things while I'm still here, but I will leave and the helper will come. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will continuously lead you, give you an understanding of heavenly things that you would not normally know. That we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. So you can only speak truth. And we are in his son, Jesus Christ. So you see the father, you see the son, you see the Holy Spirit right there in that one sentence. And when you have this, you have eternal life. Because you are one with him, inseparable. Like the Father, the Son, the Spirit are inseparable. So when you give your life to Jesus, you are inseparable. So you have eternal life on the good side. Trust me, the other ones have eternal life too, but on the tormenting side. That's why I'm saying it's up to you to choose what you want. You can try to argue with me, but I'm not arguing with you. I know what I know. You can choose to know or you can choose to be ignorant. When you ask for help, help will come. The Holy Spirit has declared today he's your helper. Do you need help? Do you need wisdom? Do you need understanding? Do you need a teacher? Do you need comfort? Call on Jesus. All right. It's midday. And like I said, I don't want to keep us. That's why I'm trying to, I'm chopping the messages a bit that I planned for today so that we can get to the end on time. I want us to pray for boldness. That Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. We want us to end it with that. But in the meantime, let me just quickly give us a little bit of insight about Pentecost. Pentecost, as we know, just means 50, 5 zero. Because these were the 50 days after the first day of Passover. So Pentecost is 50 days from Passover. Okay? It is also called the Feast of Weeks. Weeks, W-E-E-K. Weeks, like in seven weeks. Seven weeks after Passover. So Pentecost falls seven weeks after the Passover. You can calculate back. Passover is Easter, you know. We are Jews and, and Christians are doing using the same Bible. So it just depends on how you look at it. It's the same thing. So these, you know, this this feast of weeks or this uh, Pentecost feast was one of the three major feasts that God required that should be observed and it should be observed in Jerusalem. Like Jesus before the crucifixion said, I have to go to Jerusalem. There are certain things God preordained must happen in Jerusalem. So it is also called the Pilgrim's Festival because people journeyed. It was a time of harvest. Yeah, people brought their first fruits. They brought them, they all took them to the temple in Jerusalem. So it was a time of merriment, a time of joy. People had to gather for this. Call it Pilgrim's Festival, call it Feast of Weeks, call, call it Pentecost, call it uh, Feast of the Harvest. It was this. It's all the same thing. People all came. They had loads of food, so it was a time of of enjoyment. It's not like Passover when everybody had to eat, you know, dry bread without yeast and things. So God instituted these things ahead of time, and He that that is why so many people of different languages were gathered 
and this is when God came to remind the world, I have my language that anybody in the world can speak and it will be known. So people gather for this joyful feast. That's why when the Holy Spirit came, those who did not understand said, these are drunk with wine. And Peter said, no, 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 look at the time. It's just morning. Nobody has had any wine yet because it was a, a, a harvest festival. People brought their first fruits to the temple. So I want us to know these things so that when you see people joyful in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is still the same. When you see them like fire, like water, like, you know, dancing, like it's all joy. God came with this gift of tongues, with this new language, because he wanted to change people's mindset. Don't just get stuck in one thing. I want, I, God is always doing a new thing. So when you have all these different scenarios in your mind, then you will understand what happened at Pentecost. People had to gather in that joyful, God preordained it. Three, three major feasts that had to be, that people had to gather. And the Jewish people said that the male, especially the male, it was an obligation for them to, to be in Jerusalem. And Jesus himself said at the Passover, I must go because that's where all the prophets were, were murdered. So God, God's language is the language of love and, and understanding, the language of wisdom, the language for excellent minds. There's no prejudice with him. It's all freedom in the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's liberty. God is not asking you to be confined. He says, be conformed. <laughs> liberty. God is giving us liberty to live right. Liberty to choose truth, like we just read in John. Understanding. Liberty to do good, to live a good life. Liberty to do that which is pleasing to God, liberty for you to enjoy the benefits of living a godly life. Even though others may be jealous, oh, they are drunk with wine. No, we are not drunk with wine. We are just full of the Holy Spirit. And he's the spirit of joy. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. And that is right and our pleasures. So when I am celebrating, don't look down on me. I'm just enjoying my father's wealth. People don't want to hear that. Oh, Christian. No, Jesus died so that you can smile. Christians should be poor when Jesus was feeding thousands. How, how, how much can a poor man feed Thousands when they don't even have things to eat by themselves. Stop buying into that religious nonsense. Read the Bible for yourself and open up and say, Spirit of truth, spirit of wisdom, come into me and teach me all things. I don't need anybody to give me rubbish. So Pentecost, you know, being a... a a harvest festival, that is why on that day, 3,000 souls were harvested for Jesus. People who did not even know what happened, they came from all around. And the Lord harvested 3,000 souls on that day because people saw things that made them marvel. These Galileans are speaking languages that we can hear. And because it was the feast of the first fruit, they were all there and they came with their harvest. You can read that in Deuteronomy 26, verse 5 to 11. I don't have time to go there anymore. Deuteronomy 26, verse 5 to 11. So being a harvest feast, it was time where people brought their first fruits, the best of their harvest were brought to the temple. 
So stop being stingy with God. If you are stingy with God, don't be surprised when everything around you is stingy. <laughs> it's up to you, not forcing anybody. It was a time of rejoicing and celebration. That is why people thought those who were filled with the Holy Spirit were filled with wine. No, it's not wine. It's fire. God provided this harvest of joy. He wants you to be part of his joy. So don't be stingy with him. And if you are stingy, don't marvel. <laughs> don't marvel that uh, you have to toil and toil and toil when, when others, who, who's, uh, you know, when other people's cups are just overflowing. You'll be wondering, are we not doing the same job? Yeah, you are doing the same job, but in a different kingdom. In my <laughs> in my kingdom, my employer always pays well. Didn't you listen to the prodigal son? In my father's house, even the servants have enough to eat and more. So in my kingdom, things are always overflowing. You can be stingy and live in your kingdom. No problem. Don't give to God. No, 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 no. Don't give to God. Keep it for yourself. And then when, when, <laughs> when famine hits, God forbid. I'm not, I'm, I, see, I want us to know. John says we know. God gives us the understanding. Holding your one pound will make you poorer. It will not make you richer. Because Jesus says give and it shall be given. That's why the Holy Spirit decided to come in this house harvest festival where people are joyful bringing their harvest in god wants to harvest souls because jesus died for souls give him your life give him your all don't hold it back if you hold it back you are only doing yourself bad ask the holy spirit he will teach you all things let us pray let us go to acts chapter 4 And pray for the spirit of bone and spirit of wisdom, understanding. Be like Peter and John. When you speak, they will say, where did that come from? So, after they were left alone because they couldn't find fault, the religious leaders could not find fault. Now, as they spoke, chapter 4, I, okay, I'll read from verse 23. Chapter 4, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own companies and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord, always important, one accord, and said, Lord, you are God. This is your prayer. Follow them in one accord and prayer. Lord, you are God. You made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Nobody is against you. If they fight you, they are fighting Jesus. So let them. Their plot is vain. We looked at that last week with, with Daniel. Daniel went into the lion's den and came out. The one that plotted vain things against them went and became breakfast for lions. So verse 27, for truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. So they are gathering against the Jesus in you. Don't fight unusual or battles that are not yours. Let Jesus fight his battle. So to do whatever your hand and your purpose determine before to be done. Now, Lord, verse 29, that's your prayer. Now, Lord, look on the threats 
and grant to your servant that with all boldness that there you can put your name here that we may speak your word that i may speak marco sarata escalamasa ziba aziba aziba you you can just continue to pray i can't read anymore marco sarata father that with all boldness we will speak your word in this season sandaramasha it's Kalama Sankt. I don't care what they think. Let them judge for themselves. Is it right for me to listen to them and do what they say, or is it right for me to listen to God? Aziba, Aziba, Azekede, Azakata. Kandiari Bomako, Sarata, Chelela Kaya. Azekede, Zakata, Aziba, Rigaroda, Zakata. Sandaramasha. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the knowledge that you bestowed on us today. Thank you that you have given us understanding into the things of heaven. Thank you that we know who we are. Thank you for your spirit of truth in us. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are here to help, to lead us into the path of life, to guide us in your light, that we may not fall praise to the agents of Satan. Father, we bless your name because you loved us and called us your own before the foundation of the world. And we are here to do your will. Sanctify us, blood of Jesus, that we may know that we are children of the Most High God. Thank you for perfecting us in you according to your will and purpose. We agree with you. We may not understand you because your ways are different, your thoughts are higher. But we say yes to you, Jesus. You don't have to ask twice. We have already given you our yeses. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you say, anytime, day or night, just empower us. Just enable us. Just give us the ability to do your will. To live in truth and in humility that all the honor, all the glory, all adoration will be to you and you alone, God of heaven. And we say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Use us to bring your will to pass. Because even kings rule here by you. Whatever we do, let it bring you honor and glory. God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's communion time. It's communion time. Go home and read that Acts 4. Um, Pray that prayer of boldness over yourself. It's the word of God. Let the word work. It's not because you understand. It's only because you obey. Let the word do what he wants to do. Jesus says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. You cannot manipulate it. The Bible doesn't have edition one, edition two, edition three. No, no, no. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever because it's the Spirit of God. The different translations are to help you understand because it came from the Hebrew and the Greek. So it's just expanding. It's just giving you nuances. It's not a different book. It's not this edition, that edition. is one book, and it's the Spirit of God speaking through those pages. Read them for yourself. 
and say, Spirit of God, work in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Communion. God is too good to mankind. If you reject him, well, <laughs> I pray that you find out while you still have breath. <laughs> It's not a joke. It's not fairy tale. It's not a bedtime story. I've, I've said that before. I'm saying it again. Make up your mind. If you open your heart, the Spirit of God will speak to you. He speaks to anybody. I don't care whether you're in the pit, whether you're in a hole, whether you're in a palace or you're in prison. God owns it all. Nothing restricts him. Is not hindered by time and space because he is God. He will reach you where you are. If you cry out for help, the helper is right there. Amen. And so, this is why Jesus suffered what he suffered, so that we can be free. So on that fateful day, the Jewish people have been celebrating Passover year in, year out because it was a command from God. Like I said, three major feasts that they had to celebrate. The Passover was one where the lamb was slain. And when John the Baptist came and, you know, prepared the heart of the people, because for 400 years there was no prophet, nothing, nobody was speaking on behalf of God. And then John the Baptist came. And he knew he was there to prepare the way for the one. And the day he saw Jesus. I mean, I keep asking myself, how can you introduce a man, behold the Lamb of God? <laughs> think, think, people. Why would John the Baptist see Jesus and call him Lamb? That is out of this world. That is Christianity. And Jesus didn't say, why did you call me lamb? No, he said, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Do you have sin? Take it to the lamb. Behold the lamb. You're in the right place. We are all sinners. Made clean by the blood of the lamb. Guilty, but forgiven. So don't be envious. Just come in and enjoy the freedom. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. You have to receive it. You have to want it. So on that day, the bread was there. The dinner was set. And Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to the Father. Father, we bless you. Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven, creator and maker of all things. Thank you for giving us bread or seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Thank you for causing us to have the wisdom to get the wheat and grind it and turn it into something we can eat. Father, we thank you because you have enabled us to do these things. So after he prayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And then the most incredible words came out of his mouth. He said, take this and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And they're like, his body? Yeah, he's been teaching them. Some disciples deserted him because he said, you have to eat my, <laughs> my body and drink my blood. Some, some said, mm -mm, that teaching is too much. We can't have it. Yeah, it's too much. That's why many run away. It's a pity. When supper was ended in the same way, he took the cup and gave thanks to the Father. 
and he said to his disciples, This cup is the cup of my blood. Is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. That thing you've been reading about. The time will come when I will make a new covenant with my people. This is the cup of that covenant. It's the cup of my blood. Which will be shed for you, my disciples. And for all men. So that sins may be forgiven. And he said, do this in memory of me. Continue to do what I'm showing you in my honor, in my memory. Don't don't stop doing it. And so, Lord Jesus, we honor you today. Because we are doing as you said, in obedience. We may not know the nitty gritty. We just say, Lord, accept our humble offering." Accept what we bring before you as children. You died for us. We could do nothing for ourselves. So we say thank you for your broken body. You were broken so that we can be made whole. And thank you for your blood that you shed. You shed your blood so that all our sins will be washed away. And we can be perfect children of the Most High God. We can never thank you enough. We bless you. We honor you. We love you. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us eat and drink the body of Christ. most perfect blood of our Lord, our King, our God, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our all, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Into my heart, into my heart, Lord, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, one more time, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart. My Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. Thank you that it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how can a grown-up man be born again? And you responded to him that this is done by the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by university. It's by the spirit of the living Jesus. Thank you, Father, for choosing us before time began to do your wonders through us. 
Help us never to be threatened or to be intimidated by what the ignorant people in the world are doing. They are only doing it because they are under the influence of the evil one. Help us to love them, to forgive them, to pray for them because they truly do not know what they are doing. We thank you for the grace that you give to us, the peace that you give to us, the joy that you give to us, the love that you give to us. Thank you that our lives are gifts from you and we honor you for it. We bless your name, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we are almost on time. All right, saints. I will love you and leave you. Remember, in the month of June, we are doing midnight prayers. 30 minutes prayers, but we start at quarter to 12, so that, you know, like yesterday, there was a glitch, so that we can have time to put things right and to preach the word a little bit, give us a passage to focus on. And then the prayer starts at midnight till half past midnight. So 30 minutes every midnight. Come and, sh and let the wheel of your destiny be oiled by the Holy Spirit. The helper is here to help you so that your journey for your future will be smooth. God is only here to help. God only wants to help. God wants nothing from you. When he says, bring your offering to the altar, he only wants to bless you. When he told Abraham, bring Isaac, he only wanted to give him children without numbers. There's nothing you can give to God. He gave those things to you in the first place. So be wise. Be wise. That's all we, I want to say. And I want to bless you this Pentecost Sunday. That your spirit will be revived. That you will know that God is for you and never ever against you. That God wants to fill you with himself. So that you can do supernatural things. Things that will beat the, the wisdom of the people of this world. God wants to do great things with you. So offer him yourself. He can only do you good. Let your only answer to Jesus be yes, Lord. And so we end it. Lord Jesus, we say yes, Lord, to you. Thank you for the price you paid. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you've been here and you've always been here, not just in Pentecost. We, we saw that you were he here in the Old Testament, but not in that full measure. But since Jesus paid the price, the door was open, and you've been with us in full measure since that time, since the first Pentecost. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We bless you. And when I, f I say first Pentecost, I mean after the resurrection of Jesus. You know, the Jewish people have been celebrating the thing. They were doing a type. They were doing it in the physical but now the supernatural has been revealed. So let us understand these things and give glory to God. Father, we honor you, we worship you, we bless you. Endow us with your spirit. Help us to be children of the Most High God. Don't let us live like children without Father. Because Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. And you said from time, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And I pray that we would be comforted with these words in Jesus' name. Amen. I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge, the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield, and the love of the Father is a blazing firewall of protection around you. The enemy can look, but they cannot touch because you are the apple of God's eyes. Your name is written in his palms. So don't be afraid of what you are seeing around you. It's not touching you. Stay in the love of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Mwah. 
Bye.